Hi everyone, welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley, I'm the editor and founder of the Journalist Toolbox. And today we're going to talk about tools that can help you cover environment issues. A uh, very important topic. Um, if you look at journalisttoolbox.org, down on the left hand rail here, uh, we have an entry uh, called environment. Uh, and when you go there, uh, you'll see a, an entire category full of different topics. Uh, everything from locating government agencies and uh, data on environmental accidents and public safety, wildlife issues, all kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to take you to this uh, in, in miscellaneous environment sites page. Uh, and on that page, uh, we have a very large group of links and resources. Um, everything from the environmental working group uh, to all these different types of databases, some Google tools in here uh, that I'll mention in a minute. Um, EPA reports on toxicology, uh, all kinds of different things. Uh, we also have a web page too on wildfires. It's over here on the left-hand rail. Uh, Public Safety also has some environmental uh, tools on it as well. Um, but most of what we're going to cover today you can find on this miscellaneous environment, miscellaneous environment sites uh, page on Journalist Toolbox. Um, so the first tool we're going to look at is this one called the Pharos Project. Um, these links that I've listed here that I'm going to talk about uh, you can also find in the YouTube channel for this video, uh, they're listed in the description uh, underneath the video. So you can go in and find all these uh, uh, web links and also, uh, you know, uh, you can freeze a frame here or do a screen grab of it if you wanted to. But uh, these are all listed in the YouTube channel. So the Pharos Project is the first one I want to show you. And this one allows you to look at chemical hazards. Uh, there's more than uh, 60,000 uh, substances in there. Um, and it also lets you do comparisons of those chemical hazards. It has hazards lists that are in basic building materials, things like that that can be very, very helpful if you're uh, reporting on a public safety issue. Um, uh, overview, um, overview lets you pull satellite imagery. There are some paid and some free images in there. Uh, beautiful satellite imagery that you can use in stories. It's also a good place to go to think of story ideas, and I'll show you a little bit of that in a minute. Then I'll get into the Google tools. Uh, the Google Sustainability Watch page Sustainability.Google has their whole suite of uh, environment uh, sites on it. Uh, everything from, uh, you know, the Google Insight, uh, Environmental Insight Explorer, uh, Your Plan, Your Planet, which we're going to play with. Um, there's all kinds of Forest Watch, um, uh, the, the Fishing Watch, uh, which allows you to track fishing, fishing vessels uh, all over uh, the planet. Um, all kinds of great tools in that sustainability watch link here. This is just kind of the overview link. And then we're going to look at these two uh, sub-level uh, tools uh, in just a little bit. But let's start with the Pharos Project. Pharos Project um, uh, allows you, is a huge database. Um, you have to log in and create a little login here uh, in the upper right uh, to be able to use all of the features on the site. It's free. Uh, it is also very safe. Um, so uh, go ahead and set up a free login. And once you do, um, you can go in here and you can uh, search for different chemicals. Um, I'll go in and look up by bisethanol. And here it gives me bisethanol and several different types of compounds. Uh, it gives them a green screen score. It also allows you to go up here to the top and uh, create a comparison uh, of this chemical to another chemical to see how uh, toxic the two are together uh, or comparing them to each other. Um, it also has this little hazards list out front, um, health and environment hazards list. It uh, gives you a little breakdown of it, gives you the name, it goes through an alphabetical order, uh, the agency that oversees that chemical, um, all kinds of different uh, information about it, um, you know, little facts about it, you know, if. Uh, uh, you know, maybe one state has voted not to use that uh, chemical uh, in any of their building products, it would be there on the hazards list. Common products is a really good one for journalists because what this does is breaks down different types of chemicals that might be found in building products. And how you use this is, uh, let's say you're going and doing a story on a new government building that's going up uh, in downtown uh, Chicago. Uh, and uh, you, they're putting a new carpeting in there. Uh, you could go in and look up some of these different uh, uh, fibers and see if they're listed in the building products that are going into that building. 
um, and see, you know, what, uh, you, know, you know, are they banned? Are there certain uh, health risks associated with those chemicals that are going into that product? You know, there's a lot of everything from drywall to uh, insulation, plumbing, uh, all kinds of different cork flooring. There's all kinds of stuff in here. So just get in the habit if you're writing a lot about construction, both public and private, and you're able to see the building products that are going in and what uh, what they're using and what chemicals uh, or the breakdown of the, the uh, materials in those products. You can go here and see, you know, what's dangerous and what is not. Really, really great tool. Ferrosproject.org. Great, great website. The next tool we're going to look at is this site called Overview, over hyphen view. Um, this allows you to go in and look at satellite imagery. Um, if you go to the explore button up in the upper left, it has uh, stories, daily, an index, and a map. Uh, you can go into the map and kind of poke around and look at different cities. Um, you can look at different uh, areas, uh, you know, nature, mining projects, things like that. And you can click on them and get these great overhead shots that you can take and use and you can download these. It's really cool. Um, they do do larger uh, images of this that you can turn into posters and things like that. A lot of people uh, like to do an overhead satellite shot of their uh, hometown or whatever and turn it into a poster. Uh, but for our purposes, for journalistic use, uh, you can go in and just download these images for free. Um, they're just uh, uh, um, uh, they're from NASA. They're from the U.S. Geological Survey. Um, just like the Google Earth tools, these are uh, you know uh, widely considered uh, fair use uh, because they're paid for with tax dollars. Uh, NASA uses our tax dollars to go and shoot these images, so they're really ours anyway. Um, the story section is a really interesting place to go. Um, you can see how they're using a lot of these images in different types of stories. You know, talking about uh, this was a, a story on uh, cruise ships and the pollution that they create in the ocean, um, and how they were able to use satellite imagery over the top of these uh, uh, cruise ships as a nice visual. So you can see the fuel coming out and, and you know, the lake and things like that that uh, can cause uh, issues in, in the water. Um, uh, rethinking nuclear power. Uh, they've got this new one, uh, project on the coronavirus. Uh, they did a really nice job with imagery uh, over the Australian bushfires. Um, and this would work for California too, the wildfires we've had there and in Nevada, Arizona. Um, so you can really come here and find all kinds of really cool ideas of how to use satellite imagery in a story. Um, uh, and uh, you know, if you need to know more about the organization, it does have a little about page up here who runs it and things like that. Uh, where they pull data uh, from NASA and, and some of the other uh, mapping uh, elements in there. Um, On to the Google tools. Uh, the Google sustainability page uh, uh, is a really good one. It is the sustainability.google page. Uh, this is an overview page for all of their sustainability environmental uh, projects. These first two on the list we're going to look at, uh, Your Plan, Your Planet, and the Environmental Insights Explorer. But they have many others here. Uh, you can go in and look up Global Fishing Watch and track uh, fishing vessels all over the uh, uh, world. Forest Watch allows you to go in and, and look at forest uh, uh, fires and things like that, and uh, you know how uh, our forests are disappearing, and uh, uh, all kinds of great data in there. So let's go to this first tool. It's the one on the left, Environmental Insights Explorer. Um, and I've also got the link uh, in our YouTube channel uh, it's this one, insights.sustainability.google, the Environmental Insights Explorer. Um, and this one uses Google Maps uh, data um, to track emissions um, from cars. It looks at how heavy the traffic is in, in the area. It looks at uh, public transportation and other things that might reduce emissions. Uh, looks at how people on their phones, you know, you can uh, track people on their phones. You can see uh, how many people are moving on uh, uh, in their cars as opposed to uh, public transportation. Uh, and you can track these uh, by calling up your city in here. You can just uh, type in the name of your city here. If it's not available yet, you can always go in and request the data on your city. If it's not available there, sometimes for smaller cities, uh, they're not available. Um, but you know, let me type in Menlo Park, California. And it gives me Menlo Park, the size, population. Uh, it gives me rooftop uh, solar potential. Um, so I can go in and explore that data and actually adjust uh, some of the parameters in there. Uh, so you can see how the emissions change. So let's say we reduce uh, uh, the amount of uh, commuters and cars. So I can go in here to transportation uh, and adjust these numbers 
uh, and see how the data changes. So you can adjust values. It's got uh, inbound and outbound. You got people in their uh, cars, 149,000 coming in, 150,000 outbound. Um, that's the uh, uh, total per year. Uh, uh, that's daily. And then uh, they also have data per year uh, on the amount of uh, um, uh, amount of emissions. Um, so you can increase the cycling numbers here. And I can reduce the automobile. And these numbers will begin to change. I'm just going ever so slightly. You can also type over these as, as well. Um, you track and adjust how far people are driving. You know, if they're driving shorter distances, you know, that type of thing. I'll type in five miles. And you see how these numbers change. The emission totals change. If you reduce the automobiles, increase the bus numbers, increase the cycling numbers. And your city's data portal often has commuter numbers in them. Uh, so you can adjust these, you know, of course, you know, our pedestrian numbers and cycling numbers so oftentimes are estimates, but the rail numbers and bus numbers, they're able to track, you know, through your, through your transportation, transit authority uh, and get pretty good data on it. So uh, you can go in and adjust these and, and really get a good uh, idea of measurements on, you know, emissions and, and how they could change if people just change some of their basic habits. Um, so this is the Google Environmental Insights Explorer. Uh, very helpful tool. You can download the data directly out of it. You can also share uh, the information about your community uh, by just hitting this button up here and share, share it over your social channels very quickly. This last one is called Your Plan, Your Planet. Um, and this is a good one. I teach data journalism. And this is a really good exercise in showing students how to take a piece of data and convert it into uh, uh, a number that makes more sense to the reader. Um, so you can go in here and you can uh, pick anything you want, uh, energy, food, uh, I'll, I'll select water up here. And it'll ask you some basic questions about uh, your uh, usage of water, making every drop count in the, in the shower and things like that. So you'll go in here and it'll ask you, how many minutes is your usual shower? And I'm going to, you know, I'm about an eight minute shower guy. So uh, I select eight minutes. Um, and it says in one year that would fill 25 hot tubs or 7,300 gallons of water used. Um, again, this puts this in perspective with the 25 hot tubs, 7,300 gallons of water used. Uh, I do not use a water, mark, uh, water smart shower head, uh, but if I did, you know, it would uh, radically uh, change uh, uh, the data up here. It would reduce it by 20%. Um, or if I was taking longer showers, um, those numbers obviously would go up as opposed to a shorter shower. Don't know of too many people taking four minute showers. And you can click continue here and just keep going through. It'll talk about, you know, doing dishes, dishwasher, so you know, hand washing your dishes, all kinds of really cool stuff in here. And it helps you put those numbers into perspective. So if you're doing a story on water conservation, you know, that might be a really, really good thing to do uh, is to go into that uh, interface and start playing around with it. You can pull some interesting numbers out of there. So these are the tools, uh, Ferro's Project uh, Overview, uh, the Sustainability Watch uh, tools in Google. Uh, they're all available on uh, the Journalist Toolbox miscellaneous, envi miscellaneous Environment Sites uh, page. They're all up here right, right at the top. You can see them in the first you know, uh, seven or eight links up here. Uh, so you can access them there. I also put these links uh, in your uh, YouTube channel's description uh, so you can pull the... Uh, uh, links out of there. It'll be the description right underneath this training video. That's all I had for now. Take care and we'll see you next time.